Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be talking about my favorite book boyfriends. It was really hard to narrow this list down to 10 men, but I did it. Be proud of me, be proud of me. Okay, I have 10 men here. They're not in order like of my favorites by the way i i no, you're gonna kill me if you make me do that um but i loved all 10 of these men and so let's get into it one of my favorite of all time ren bergman <laughs> ren freaking bergman from always only by chloe lisa this man like all the men in this series oh can get it they can get it okay chloe knows how to write an irresistible man this is the romance between ren and frankie frankie is the social media manager on ren's hockey team and they end up falling in love with each other in this book ren has been crushing on her hardcore frankie is oblivious just doesn't really know what's going on um but then like feelings get revealed okay she ends up developing her own feelings as well while she's staying at his house with him because her house gets broken into and she has nowhere else to stay while like the locks are getting fixed and everything so he offers up his spare bedroom it's so Good. Ren Bergman in here is the epitome of like a golden retriever lover boyfriend. Give that to me now, please. I need him in my life. I need him to exist in real life. Please, Chloe. Please tell me that you were inspired by a real life man and that man is single. Thank you. Thank you. Another fantastic, delicious specimen of a man is Bo from Out on a Limb by Hannah Mom Young. I love Hannah's men as well. Hannah knows how to write a delicious, like adoring man. I love all of her men so much. Her heroines are also fantastic as well, but we're here to talk about men, boyfriends. Okay, I love Beau so stinking much. This book starts out with him having this hookup night with Wynn and they end up meeting at this Halloween party. She ends up getting pregnant. And from that moment, he figures out that he's gonna be a father. He is right on it. Full on dad mode and is like, come move in with me. I wanna be in your life. I wanna be in this baby's life. Like we're gonna make this work and they do it starts out as friends even with that one night together because they don't want to ruin their relationship for the sake of the baby um so they try and keep it platonic but they just can't they end up falling in love with each other every single day with them living together and figuring out how to raise this baby together it's so good Bo is what i feel like every man should strive to be like is Bo durand like please i have a few bk borson men okay i have a i have two um <laughs> I guess she knows how to write her men as well. So um, in the weeds, Becca in here. This is a grumpy sunshine romance between Becca and Evie. And uh, it takes place on a small, like, Christmas tree farm. It's so good. Becca in here is like this burly, like, man covered in tattoos who's an ultimate softy who, like, rescues animals. He's so stinking cute. And I love the love that he has for Evie. Oh, it's so swoon-worthy. And then also Caleb from Mixed Signals. <sighs> I think I love him even more than Beckett. I love this man with my whole heart and chest. It's his romance with Layla, who is like the baker um, on the fam, on the fa on that farm. Whoa, on the tree. It is a farm. It's a Christmas tree farm. It's not like a typical farm. Anyway, the, the tree farm. She owns this bakery on the property. And they end up like kind of like fake dating each other to figure out like why they aren't really in relationships. Kind of like do research. Like, I want you to date me to figure out what I need to do in order to find my forever person. Like, what am I doing wrong? So they end up dating each other to figure that out. And they end up obviously actually falling in love with each other. One of my favorite scenes that I've ever read about ever is Layla's um, bakery ends up losing power one night. And all of the baked goods that she baked the day before for a very, very, very important reason are all getting ruined from the heat. When I tell you this man does everything, everything possible to help her does not sleep a wink the whole entire night he help he helps find people to help her make stuff he has to find another generator he has to do all these other things he does all these things to help her achieve her dreams i was absolutely in love with caleb in that scene i'm like you're just doing everything possible to make your woman happy and i love you i love you so much we have another beckett <laughs> Maybe it's just Beckett's. Beckett's do it for me, okay? So this is Beckett from Hidden Waters by Katherine Cowles. This is the romance between Addie and Beckett. They end up having to become roommates in this small town. Um, and Addie comes from a very troubled past. Um, she grew up in a cult and she finally escaped that cult. The people in said cult, her family are, let's just say, trying to get her back. And Beckett's not having any of that. He knows that Addie is very vulnerable and she's going through a lot. And he's gonna be so patient and kind and protective towards her. I love Beckett so much. Like, I love how much this man is patient and kind. Like, he is the epitome of a kind and patient man that I think all men should be, honestly. Honestly. 
like men take notes please i just love this one and i love the adoration and time he took for caring for addy like i can't give over how much patience he had for this woman and he wasn't like you know how people are like patient but like huffing and puffing about being patient no like he's like I'm going to be here when you need me and when you're ready. And I love you. Like, I'm going to be here for you no matter what. Ugh, I love him. One of my more recent book boyfriends is Ethan from Kissing Kosher by Jean Meltzer. <laughs> Ethan is another hero that loves to caretake and do kind of like acts of service for Avital, our heroine. She owns this Jewish bakery business and um, she doesn't know, but Ethan has been hired to work in the bakery, but has ulterior motives for working there. Um, his grandfather's actually like the business rival to Avital's grandfather, who was the owner of the, bo the bakery she runs now. But Ethan ends up falling for this bakery in this community when he's working here, even though he has like ulterior motives, he's realizing, I don't think I need to be doing this. Like these people are amazing. My grandfather was wrong, but he doesn't know how to stand up to his grandfather. And ends up absolutely falling in love with Avital as well. Avital has a chronic illness. And one of the best scenes that I've ever read about ever is like, oh, uh, she has a lot of chronic pain with her chronic illness. And he completely makes this space, this safe space for her at work in the office. And I was just like crying. <laughs> I was like, you're going to take all this time and care for this woman. Like, uh, it it made me feel so loved and I wasn't even the one like going through that, you know? But yeah, I love Ethan and I love how much he loved and cared for Avital. One of my most recent reads is The Friendship Study by Ruby Barrett. I'm in love with Jesse in this book. <laughs> like I'm getting goosebumps right now. I'm in love with him. Like I love Jesse so much. This is the romance between Lulu and Jesse. They were set up on a blind date by a mutual friend and it doesn't really turn out well. It's not a great date. The two of them aren't really in the best mindset for dating anyway, but they just go on the date to appease their friend. Anyway, they never really expect to see each other after that point, but they do at a friendship study that the local college is putting on and a major rule with this friendship study is that you cannot fall in love with other participants because it's a friendship study. The two of them end up falling for each other the more time they spend together. And I love this friends to lovers romance. It is so good. Jesse in here, I love him. I love him so much. He also deals with chronic pain. So I really related to him in a lot of aspects. He sometimes uses a cane to walk around like a mobility aid to help him get around. And I do too. So like, I really, really relate to him, but I also just love him and how much he cares for and loves Lulu and takes the time to do things Lulu loves and appreciates like her love languages. Like he makes sure to be there for her in every every sense of the word. I know this is a little bit of an obscure one, but I don't care because this man will always be a book boyfriend for me. Um, but that's John Matthew <laughs> from uh, Lover Mine by J.R. Ward. He's essentially in like all the Black Dagger Brotherhood books starting from book two. But Lover Mine is his book with his heroine, Zex. I love John Matthew. John Matthew is not able to speak. And the way that he communicates with his actions I love this man. I love th this vampire man. I love him. So this is book number eight in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series, which is a romance series all about this secret underworld world of vampires. And John Matthew is someone who didn't know that he was a vampire and he became a vampire because you're not bitten to be a vampire. You're born a vampire. And there's also his backstory. Like I get chills every time I think about his backstory and like all the things going on with him that he doesn't even know about. I love him so much. And then his romance with Zex, like you have this giant broody, quiet man who falls for this bad A buzz cut, like muscly woman, like, ooh, like he is totally gone for her the moment that he sees her. Like he meets her before he even like fully becomes a vampire and he like is smitten right from the get-go. He's like smitten with her and I am obsessed with him and something happens to her in this book and he is going to tear down the entire effing world to find her. The entire world. So cannot stop raving about my man, John Matthew. Need I say anything that hold up this book? Our, uh, our hero in this one, forever book boyfriend. Love him. Just, I love him. I, 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 I need him to actually exist. I bet other people feel the same way as me. He's the best. He's the absolute best. I love him. I don't have to say anything else. Welcome to my TED talk. Thank you. And lastly, another one that I don't feel like needs a lot of explanation is Mr. Darcy from Pride and Prejudice. I love Mr. Darcy. I feel like this is another character that um, really shows how much he loves Elizabeth through his actions. Um, like he's realized halfway through this book 
with a failed proposal like, I have messed up. I need to fix this. Even if I don't get Elizabeth in the end, even if she does not end up loving me, I need to do these things for her to make her life better because I want her to have the best life possible. And oh, I love this man so much. I love him. I, I freaking love him. I, and I love him in um, the movies also. Like 2005 version is a superior version. Do not fight me. And um, I feel like he does a great job at encapsulating Mr. Darcy and... Oh, he's gonna be forever a book boyfriend, a book husband, whatever you want to call it. I, I love this man. Anyway, say hi to those are 10 book boyfriends for you. Let me know down below <laughs> who your book boyfriends are and if you agree with any of mine. If any of mine are on your list, I would love to know. If you don't feel like commenting anything else, you can leave me any heart emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.